Everybody and their grandmas is talking right now about AI agents. But let's be honest, most of what people call AI agents are just glorified automations. I see this mistake all the time, especially now with tools such as Make and Innate Then, where someone just chucks in a language model and calls it an AI agent. But the truth is that that's not how it works. And in this video, I'll break it all down. I'll show you what actually makes an AI agent, what doesn't. I'll put a couple of really good examples for you to fully understand the difference. And I'll also tell you when you're good to build an AI agent and when you're just better off building a simple AI automation. The thing is that AI agents are powerful, but they're not always the right tool for the job. So by the end of this video, you'll exactly know when to use an AI agent and when to skip the hype and keep things simple. Let's dive right in. Okay. So let's understand the difference, okay? We're gonna keep seeing the differences so that you know you really you really dig it in, but let's just define it at the start. So workflows, right? People call it workflows, AI automation, step-by-step -step automations, whatever you wanna call it, okay? But essentially, this is these workflows are systems where LLMs and tools are predefined already, okay? We predefine them. They are uh, static pieces of code that don't change. You know, we have an LLM perhaps, we give it a, an input, then it generates an output, then that output could be used by another tool or another LLM to keep going through those steps and then go from input to output, right? It's perfect for tasks that you exactly know how they need to work and if you want to have you know the, the the most control possible and then we have agents so i did mention to you that within the workflows we define the paths but with agents the llms actually decide what steps to take next okay we kind of laid out for them but they are the ones to decide what steps to take and what tools to use in order to get from input to output so essentially they are the ones that maintain the control to accomplish those tasks. Okay, so this is when you want some more flexibility and, and whatnot. I think Hugging Face did a really good job uh, to introducing the agents concept. So let's actually click the link. Yeah, I really like their definition. AI agents are programs where the LLM outputs control the workflow. They decide what to use, what steps to take, okay? So it's in accordance to the definition that I just gave you, okay? And I was gonna explain it in, in some way, right? Uh, but I think Hugging Face did a better job. I didn't wanna keep it too, too complex. I was gonna break it down step by step, laying down all the components, but I think I'm gonna do it the following way, okay? We're gonna go through this example or this diagram together. So let me pull out the pen, because I like drawing with pens. So we have this prompt, and this prompt is going to be already predefined by the person who builds this. Okay, so we have the goals, preferences, and abilities. There's a component of it that can be dynamic, which is the query from the user. So let's say we, we set this all up in a conversational interface, right, on a chat interface, and then someone asks, I don't know, what are the top five hamburgers? That's going to be added in some other part of the prompt, okay? Perhaps as part of the goals. Then we have the memory, which in this case, we can have past interactions between the user and the agent and also observations. I'll explain that later on. But at the start, let's say this is the first time the person talks or interacts with this agent. So in this case, this is going to be blank, okay? We're gonna pass this to the agent and then the agent is going to decide what actions to take, okay? So it can decide, well, I need to use the calculator to add these two numbers up, or I need to trigger the Google Maps API in order to, for the location that the user asks for, okay? Whatever that is, we are going to get some result from, from the tools that the agent triggers. We're gonna call these observations. These observations are then going to be added back onto the memory so it was blank. Now we're adding something onto this memory and then we're passing that onto back onto the agent. And then the agent is going to decide based on the observation that I have now, based on the goals, preferences and abilities, would the user be happy with the output? You know, would the user be happy with, the, with this observation? If the user would not be happy with this observation based on these things, then I'm gonna try to trigger the tools again, whatever tools I need, to get a better observation. So now we're gonna perform action two. We're gonna trigger uh, whatever tools. A second observation, we're going to add that onto the menu and then comes back to the agent. And then the agent decides, okay, is this second observation good enough? If it is, then we will output it to the user. And that's how an agent works in a nutshell. You saw how it has the ability to trigger the tools that it needs uh, in order to get uh, an observation and how it's able to reason over an observation, right? So these two things are, are, are really powerful things that an agent has on top of uh, perhaps a, 
a normal uh, language model. So just to recap, the essential components of what makes an AI agent are the goal-directed behavior, so I'm working towards a goal. Second would be the ability to interact with environments so that it can take actions. And then the third one is the ability to reason or to make non-deterministic decisions. Non-deterministic because we can't control that part. We can't determine what it's going to think about. Okay, so these are the three main things that make an AI agent. Now let's go through some examples. I'm gonna go through this workflow first and you're gonna tell me if this is an AI agent or not, okay? I showed this uh, a couple of videos ago. So I'm gonna hit test workflow and I'm gonna to go to the Telegram, okay? So this is where I can chat to it. This is the interface I connected it to. So I'm gonna ask, what tables can you see? It's gonna go do its thing and then it says this, okay? You should already know if this is an agent or not, okay? It might be a bit trickier for you because you don't see any access to tools. That's because this is a SQL agent. So the fact that it's already able to look through a database should already tell you that it's using this database as a tool, all right? And it's generating SQL and accessing the information in this database by using SQL queries and then retrieving an observation back, right? An observation in this case, because we mentioned it before as, as an observation. So. Now we're gonna ask it, because I wanna show you something. I'm gonna show you the lock of this. What are the best products in Zara? So now it's going to go through a, a couple of rounds uh, on this chat model. And this should give you an indication that it's going through a couple of iterations, okay? It's able to iterate. And that's one of the main uh, features that, that an agent has. It's able to reason and think if the observation is good, right? Reason and think if, if the output is not good, then I'm going to go back, you know, I'm going to execute the tool again, or I'm going to, you know, re rethink about the answer until it's to the standards of what is indicated in the prompt. Let's see what it gave back. So you see one thing, okay? So the objective was, what are the best products in Zara? Best is you know uh, a bit abstract so that's another challenge that it had to overcome so let's see how how it, it did all this let's go through the logs the fact that it's already as i mentioned before the fact that it's already triggering multiple llm calls should give you an indication that it's it's going through a couple of iterations to get to the answer okay so let's check the output to answer the question i'll need to query so you see it, it thinks it reasons i need to create the zara products table it's not just an input output it actually thinks before doing something so first i'll check the scheme of this table to understand what information is available so action action right so it, it knows before already the tables because i asked it before what tables do you know about then it goes to this one to determine the best products we'll assume that the products with it has it assumes that the products with the high sales volume are the best right because i said so I didn't really define what is best. I'm doing a guess, but that's fine. So it says, we'll order the sales volume in the sending order and limit the result to 10. So first, even before that, I'll use the query checker tool to ensure it's correct. So using one of its tools. All right, there you go, SQL. Okay, so it makes a query and then it makes observations, right, from this result. So the query correctly quotes the column tables, it uses cast to convert sales volumes. Okay, and all that. The limit clause is used correctly. There are no joins. Okay, the query looks correct and it doesn't need any modifications. Okay, let's see what the next one is. The query checker has confirmed that our query is correct. Now let's execute the query and then there we go. So it goes through a couple of steps to ensure that the query is the correct one, okay? So it takes a couple of LLM calls to actually figure that out. Now that we have the query results, I can provide an answer. So it checks, it checks that it has an answer first. Perhaps if I put some certain objectives, right? Put it to two decimal places or something like that. And if the answer wasn't in two decimal places, then it would probably go back and say, oh, actually the user wants it in two decimal places. So I'm gonna rephrase this or redo the answer, right? To give what the user wants, okay? But the point is that it goes through through these iterations, right? It goes through these couple LLM calls and observations to make sure that we're giving uh, an output that the user wants. So it can reason and it has an access to a tool, right? Which are the, the two main important things. And it's working towards a goal. So it ticks all the boxes. So that's the first agent. And then we're going to go through another one, okay? So let's go through this fitness advisor and I'm going to chat to it. Okay, so it asks me, okay, what is your main fitness goal? I'm gonna put fat loss. I want to lose as much fat as possible. I'm obese. Okay, so how many days per week can you work out? Two, okay, what type of workouts? Strength training, only body weight exercises. Okay, so I want you to think about if this is an agent or, or something else. I mean, you should already have figured out. It gives me, a workout plan. It asked me a couple questions and then it thought about those questions and then based on that it gave me an answer. But guess what? This is just a simple chatbot. 
because it doesn't have access to any tools or any reasoning. So all of that was because it had some buffer memory that it could that it could work with. And, and yeah, well, you saw that here, it generates an output every time I chat to it. It's a back and forth. It's an input. I give it an input, then it gives me an output. So this is a plain and plain and simple chatbot because it doesn't have access to tools either. It doesn't have access to any environment apart from the other things that I mentioned. So it looked like it was it was you know accessing something, but but not really. It's just accessing its, its internal information and uh, its general knowledge. And you can see here on the log, it's all it's all um, it's all added in the prompt. I told it, it, it might look like because it's asking questions, right? Step by step that it looks like an agent, but I actually put that on the prompt. I told it to do step by step questions. Okay, hopefully you got that correct. If not, that's fine as well. Okay, let's move on to the next example. So let me delete that one. Well, this one, I think I'd have to explain it because this is the concept that I explained back at the start of the video where I told you that this, these two are LLM nodes, okay? They are LLM chains, if you may. So what's happening here, this is, by the way, another video that I made. This is a, an automation for creating presentations out of uh, transcriptions for, for clients to, to be able to warm the client and close them. So what happens is that I get an API request with a transcription and then this LLM here extracts the information, the relevant information. Then we have ChatGPT creating a proposal outline and then we're sending it to a couple tools. So it's doing everything step by step and the LLMs don't have a decision on what's going to happen next. We're giving it an input and it's giving an output. Input and then output. So compare that with this one. So let's let's give an example. Let's Let's see what happens here. In this case, this is an agent. Okay. And we don't know that this is the key non-deterministic pathways reasoning or how was it called non-deterministic decision-making. This is the main thing. We can't define how the LLM is going to interact with the tools or get to the output. We don't know what steps it's going to make it in. So let's say send, send message to Mike to celebrate for subscriber to as many communication channels as possible. Okay, so first of all, it knows that it needs to check the Google Sheets because it needs to know what who Mike is and it needs to know what email to send. You know, it needs an email. So it's like, okay, well, I have access to a Google Sheet. Okay, let me access the Google Sheet to grab Mike's email and then I'm going to send him a Gmail. And then it does the following. I have sent messages to Mike celebrating the growth of our communication channel. Okay, I think it didn't it didn't understand my query properly. Okay, and that that's fine. Uh, this is this is an unrefined workflow. Okay, let's let's do this this one. Message Mike that I invited him to a meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. regarding the client that we will call next week. So let's see live what's happening. So checks the Google Sheet, it needs to know what email is Mike associated with, goes to chat model, it's deciding what tools to use, so it uses the Gmail. Okay, let's do a better example. Um, what, what has in the context? Let's see. Send a Google Meet to Herman and notify him through email about the, the Google Meet and ask him to bring his two developers. Okay, so it knows it needs to check. It needs to check the Google Sheet to understand what email to send it to, right? What email is associated to Mike? So, in this case, it knows that Mike, uh, I mean Herman, sorry, uh, Herman's email is this one, right? So it it, it knows that uh, because it accessed the Google Sheet. It knows that it has to access Google Sheet. Then it knows that uh, it had to send an invite to Google Meet. So that's why it triggered the Google Calendar tool. Then it triggered the Gmail to notify him about the Google Meet event. And the thing is that we don't know what order it should do these things, right? There's, there's an idea, but it could have sent a Gmail first. It could have sent a Google Calendar first, right? Maybe not in this case, because it's a bit more determined, but let's say you have uh, five, 10 tools and the query is a bit more ambiguous and there's no, there's no need to do things in a certain order. The agent can do it in whatever order it deems relevant and we can't control that. That's one of the main uh, factors or properties that, that makes agents different. Okay, just to reinstate the fact, I want I want you to really understand this. And I'll also drop uh, this uh, this post here about building effective agents by Anthropic. I think it's it's really important that you understand uh, perhaps the different types of AI automations that might be valuable for you to use. These are AI automations. Okay, so we have here the augmented LLM. 
we have uh, prompt chaining, we have routing, we have parallelization. As you see, these go in one way. They don't go back uh, to the same LLM to rethink about, about, about things. Even in this one, this is not really an agent. These are two different LLMs. So input, output, input, output. That makes sense. This is what, what agents are. So as I explained before, this is, this is a bit easier. So LLM call, action, environment, then we get a feedback right? As I explained before. So the human is involved by giving it an input. It creates an action environment that we get feedback from the environment. If the input is good enough, then we're giving it as an output. Well, if an input is not good enough, we're going to keep going through this loop until we get an output that the user wants. Okay. So I'll give you, I'll give you this, um, the, a link to this in the description. So now I'm just going to briefly go through when to use AI agents. I think it's important for you to understand this. So first of all, you need to consider simplicity. Don't get hung over the fact that AI agent sounds cool. <laughs> if I had to recommend something, don't use one. <laughs> okay. So if you have an objective, uh, you know, which a goal that you need to use AI to build with, right? You need to build something to achieve this objective. Try just making a simple API call to a language model. If that doesn't work, okay, now if you require more complexity or more or more intricacy to that, then consider agents, okay? But your first step never has to be building an agent, never. Try an LLM API call, try chaining them together into an automation, such as, look, such as, so for this one, right? Consider chaining it in this way, okay? Try adding, try adding it like this, or in the ways that, you know, in any of the five ways, that you're shown here. These are all AI automations. If that doesn't work, then create an agent. Okay, that's uh, that's how you should approach this. And I'll repeat it things a couple of times, but you guys need to understand this because the best way to go with, with AI is to first build with AI in the most predictable way. We want, we like predictability, we like control. When things slip out, slip out of control, that's when all errors, all kinds of errors come. And that's not how you build proper applications, right? Even, even go, Back to that. If you could write it with code, if you don't need AI, remove AI, right? You will only use AI when the, the co coding capabilities hit limits. Then you use AI. Then you use LLM chains. Then if that doesn't hit the bar, then you use AI agents, okay? That's how you should think about building AI applications. Consider the trade-offs. This one's below, for example. This is one of them. So do you want flexibility? Do you want the AI agent to, to do whatever it wants? or do you want it to be predictable? There's all the trade-offs as well. I invite you to just do your own research, go through perplexity, go to ChatGPT, figure out. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you uh, got something out of this. I hope you understood the differences between an AI agent and an LLM chain or an AI automation, what they should be used for, what is the order in which you got to think about building AI applications from using code when that doesn't work, use uh, an LLM chain, right, with the different types of chains that I showed you in that Anthropic post. If that doesn't work, then go ahead and try the agents out, right? But AI agents have should never be your first choice unless you really understand the applications of it within your use case, right? What problems are solving. If you don't have an understanding, then it's better to start off in the simplest, most predictable way. The more you add complex things, the more abstract it gets, the harder it's going to be to find those errors and fix them if any errors arise which unfortunately it's going to happen so if you enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up and give me a follow it would help a lot in supporting this channel and it will help me understand what videos to make next and if you didn't like the video for some reason please let me know why in the comments below you see here uh my laptop screen broke so i gotta go and repair it okay so i'm gonna have to dash off all right See you in the next video. Thank you.